Hello, oh, welcome to this session of performance testing from OpenMentor.net. Our motto is the whole world can learn for free. In this session, we are going to talk about uh, features of a performance testing tool. Uh, when we talk about programming, there are certain concepts like, uh, let us take object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming, you, you talk about uh, inheritance, right? Uh, objects, private public methods, then uh, overloading. There are certain concepts, etc., which are quite common across all the programming languages like Java, C++, C Sharp, Python, any object oriented programming language. Same way if you take a typical functional testing tool, functional testing tool, then there are concepts like recording or replay, right? Checkpoints, etc. They are all quite common. And these concepts do not change from tool to tool. They are all same. What may differ from tool to tool is the syntax of the scripts or the menus, the way you do that stuff may be different. Apart from that, all others remain the same. The purpose of this session is, if you learn the concepts of one tool, then moving to others is easy, right? Provided, get the concepts clear. Let us talk about feature by feature in every performance testing tool. The very first feature is called protocol selection. A protocol is a way through which uh, front and back ends talk. Typically, you will know about HTTP protocol, right? Then FTP protocol, SMTP protocol, TCP IP. There are different protocols through which the front end talks to the back end. Is the format in which the message is transferred. Performance testing tools depend upon these protocols. Some tools are designated only for HTTP protocol. Some may be using HTTP and HTTPS for security layer. Same way, there are certain tools which can test only WAP, wireless application protocols. So, depending upon the support for the protocol, you have to choose the tools. The foremost criteria is protocol selection in every tool. So, ensure whether the tool provides support or plugins or add-ins for the protocols that are used in your application. Right? In many cases, uh, some tools may support HTTP but not AJAX. Right? AJAX uh, requests that are going. So, you need to be very specific about whether the tool supports everything that your application uses. Okay. The second thing is recording scripts. So there used to be a script generator. Using the script generator, you can record how an end user does one business transaction. For example, uh, let us take an online uh, store. A user searches for the catalog item and then a user chooses that to shopping cart. Then user goes to the payment gateway and buys the product. So this is typically a sequence. So you should be in a position to record the scripts. right? And uh, using recording, you can also do modularize the code, the script. right? So, for example, um, I'm logging in, log in, uh, then uh, browse items, then uh, add to cart, then uh, buy. 
So I should be in a position to record the script and then modularize each and every logical step within the script. That should be available. Then of course the purpose of recording is for replay script, right? So I should be in a position to replay the script. Again, when it comes to replay, I should be in a position to choose different browsers. Okay. Again, um, this is applicable for the recording also because some applications may require uh, only they may work only in Firefox. They may not work in IE. They may work in IE, not in Chrome. So you should be in a position to choose the different browsers types during recording and replaying. Most importantly, during replay, there is something called think time settings. Okay, uh, this is nothing but a delay uh, while replay between steps. So I go to the law browse items. Then before going to cart, add the shopping cart. I want to wait for say five seconds for the page to completely load. So that is called a delay or wait or think time. So you should be in a position to alter the think time during replay. Then once you are able to record and replay, then you should be in a position to do something called correlation. This correlation is nothing but dynamic data replacement or parameterization because what happens is when you are using a Java program uh, there is something called a session ID if you are using a dot net program there is something called view state some of these data come from server and you cannot predict what data will come and it may be random so unless you get that session ID from server get this dynamic data in one request then pass the same to subsequent uh, requests to server if you don't do this server will not accept your request this may act as an authenticated value or it may act as a, a state context it maintains the context so this data is unpredictable and you don't have a control on it only server gives this but whatever server gives you have to get it in one request usually soon after the login or uh, registration or whatever then pass the same data back to the server dynamically these tools must be in a position to do this correlation right it should support both uh, auto and manual correlation. In nowadays the tools are pretty intelligent. Whichever is changing uh, during the replay, it finds out which data portion is changing and which is sent by server. They identify automatically and then replace it. If not, you should do it in manual mode. So the tool should definitely support correlation. The fifth concept of every tool is data parameterization okay so I should be in a position to parameterize user input data for example if I am buying one item and thousands of users I'm going to use later I want to make sure that different users buy different items then I need to do parameterization so this is nothing but an extension of data driven tests in functional tool but what I need is I should be in a position to get data right sequentially or randomly right when I have got thousand data and hundred users I may use data one by one or I may choose random data to mimic more of a real-time situation you should be in a position to do random or sequential data parameterization okay then there is something called uh, iterations, iterations settings. This is also very important because imagine a railway reservation counter person uh, inside the counter 
the person gets the form he logs in once to the application but books hundreds of tickets finally logs out so if you take the transaction log in book the ticket log out so what may happen is which is the repeating portion is booking the ticket right uh, book ticket repeats so I should be within my script I should be in a position to loop for certain steps that is called iteration settings for this it's not recommended to code if the tool provides automatic uh, iteration settings through the GUI that will be great so now you have got of course a script with some settings and then there is something called the scripting language itself right some of the things use uh, C or some tools use uh, JavaScript some tools use VBScript right so the tool should support a complete programming language exactly like a functional testing tool does so even if something doesn't work you should be in a position to code and then run it once all these things uh, if you look at uh, point one to seven they are all for script generator right so the script generation and script settings are the key factors in any performance testing tool then there is something called runtime controller right this should be the next facility that should be available in every single uh, performance testing tool the core purpose of this runtime controller is nothing but configure number of virtual users how many users that you want to run right so ideally once you generate the script all users they're all virtual uh, they run same script usually these V users are also known as virtual users run as background threads within the load generator machine right so the controller must be able to take the script run it as multiple virtual users so it mimics simultaneous hits this is the backbone right this is the backbone of load testing tool if controller doesn't work load testing doesn't happen right and of course the controller should provide some standard settings because uh, there is a feature called ramp up users and uh, ramp down users because in a real time all users don't come to your application at the same time users slowly log into the system then use it for a long time so you should allow users in batches maybe two users every one minute getting in so 100 users will get into the system at the end of the fifth minute oh, sorry 50th minute right so tool should provide automatic ramp up and ramp down facility especially this is available this should be available at the runtime controller level then in most of the tools we want to mimic network bandwidth again uh, one person is asking uh, whether uh, these are all the features in every tool what we are talking about what are the essential features of a performance testing tool many tools provide or most of the tools provide these more than above these features many other features are supported but these are all essential features of every performance testing tool so network bandwidth uh, setting because you can have your end users coming by DSL or say broadband or a T1 connection or a dial up connection right, right? or a cable modem when you do the load testing in LAN you get maximum bandwidth but that may not be the case in a real life situation users may come at a lower bandwidth of course based on that the response time also changes so your tool should be in a position to do the network bandwidth settings for your virtual users then other thing 
again you should be in a position to mimic browsers because during running uh, IE or uh, Firefox or Chrome or uh, Safari right based upon the browsers and versions the response may be slightly changing or the rendering of that page may be changing so you should be in a position especially this is applicable for web the tool should be in a position to mimic browsers right of course once all these things are done most important part is analysis right uh, you are able to record you are able to configure users you are able to run you are able to parameterize data but for what finally I need to get uh, graphs the graphs and the reports must be detailed enough so that uh, I should not spend a long time in analyzing that going through line by line right the tool should definitely gives or should give in terms of uh, response time graphs and then um, runtime graphs see over the period of time what is the performance of the system that's called a runtime graph right and then resource breakdown for example if a web page is loaded how long it took to load that GIF file how long it took to load the CSS file it should give that breakdown uh, again the breakdown will have a size breakdown as well as a time breakdown right there is something called a download size breakdown that means within a page which component whether HTML portion is heavy or GIF is heavy or CSS is heavy then there is something called a download time breakdown I think in the previous sessions you would have seen about uh, DNS resolution connection time SSL time right uh, network time first byte time so the analysis must give you download size breakdown as well as download time breakdown based upon this you should be in a position to infer something and what is causing the bottleneck right so any tool if you take these 12 things must be definitely satisfied over and above many tools provide uh, checkpoints also that means when the load testing is going on ensure that this response is at least a portion of uh, text appears in the response or a portion of image appears in the response so that you will be ensured that no data is passed across the users by mistake right so checkpoints are also available but normally during load testing we may do very little amount of uh, checkpoints and most importantly there is something called extended log of request and the response tool should be logging information for every user for every virtual user every request and response so that if something going wrong I can at least pinpoint what has gone wrong right so these these features are essential features again over and above these features there may be many other features supported by tools depending upon the situation so of course uh, when we say protocol protocol also includes uh, technology right when I say technology uh, it may be a com decom or uh, it may be very specific to SAP thick client or it may be very specific to Siebel right so depending upon the technology and protocol your recording may vary and your tool may tool provider may ask you to buy that particular plugin so that is very very important now in the subsequent sessions uh, when we take about tools like load runner we will be explaining uh, all these features how these features are implemented in that particular tool right but if you know these concepts very well and if you see one test load testing tool and if you see another tool you will see a clear one-to-one -one mapping between the features okay I'll stop here uh, we'll meet in the next session thank you